mistake those Muslims. The Muslims are done. The Mohammedan has finished his prayer. Now we can take our pictures. Assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you are, whatever time it is. So, today, Friday, Yom al Juma, as they say in Arabic, me and my boy Broski Sam are heading to Hagia Sophia. We're going to pray our prayers here, our Friday prayers here, and listen to the sermon. To be honest, when I'm in Turkey, this is a bit hard for me because it's the only time that I actually don't understand the sermon. But I've got my boy Broski Sam, inshallah, he's going to be able to translate. It used to be the, you know, the castle of Constantine, mm -hmm. the Roman Empire from the Byzantine Empire. And yeah, now, <coughs> when Mehmed Fatih II conquered Constantinople, he turned it into a mosque. Then it turned into a museum after the establishment of the Turkish Republic. Then recently it turned back into a mosque. So that's how you can see that it still has some Orthodox church features, as you can see, like crosses. Inside, you can see pictures of the Virgin Mary, Jesus, angels, like even the architecture. Like it does look like a cathedral from the inside, but from the outside, from the inside, they do pretty good work. Mm. So, just a quick backstory. Hagia Sophia is a historical architectural marvel located in Istanbul, Turkey. The name Hagia Sophia is of Greek origin and means holy wisdom. The building has a rich history and has served various religious and cultural purposes over the centuries. Guys, please bear in mind I said the building has served various religious and cultural purposes. I'll explain further in the video. Let me take a few inshallah, yeah? Thank you. You're welcome. So, yeah, you have to watch Made in Chelsea. Man. That's the English that you like. You like that English, man. None of this wild wild stuff. Man. It's more suited to you, man. Why? <laughs> Just because I'm white. <laughs> That's a fun At first glance, it's not apparent, especially from the outside. But when you go in. You, you do realise that, hmm, there's something about this mosque that's a bit different. And then when you look up at the paintings, you know, you can see like a cross or the picture of the Holy Mary. And um, I, I didn't really understand. But upon doing some research, I found out. The Byzantine Basilica, the origin. So, the original Hagia Sophia was built as a cathedral during the Byzantine Empire in the 6th century. It was constructed under the orders of the Byzantine Emperor Justinian I and completed in 537 AD. It actually functioned as an Eastern Orthodox cathedral for nearly 1,000 years. Then... The Ottomans came along. So it became an Ottoman mosque after the Ottoman Empire conquered the Constantinople, modern day Istanbul. In 1453, Hagia Sophia was converted into a mosque. The Ottomans added minarets and made other architectural modifications to adapt the structure to Islamic worship. So, again, guys, as I said before, when you see the building from the outside, you have no clue that it used to be a cathedral. But when you go inside, it comes quite apparent if you're looking around the signs are there then in 1935 it became a secular monument following the establishment of the republic of turkey under mustafa kemal ataturk Hagia sophia was secularized and transformed into a museum this decision was part of ataturk's border efforts to modernize turkey and separate religion from state Finally, in July 2020, Turkish President Recep Tayyip Erdogan issued a decree that converted Hagia Sophia back into a mosque. 
So Alhamdulillah, I was turned back into a mosque and me and my boy Broski Sam were able to pray there. Alhamdulillah. Yep, so this move was met with both domestic and international reaction. The decision was based on the assertion of Turkey's sovereignty over its cultural and religious heritage. What is this line? I said, man. Oh, it's just a mosque, man. We come here to pray. What is all of this, these lines and stuff? I don't get it. Do you do it, man? You're not the only one who's sitting here. This isn't for wudu. No, this is for hasanat, man. <laughs> that time, they were like part of the DUN. The DUN is, which is like the government. Mm -hmm. Like in short, like Abdul Latif Subhi Pasha. Like here you can see. And the H is for Hijri, the Hijri um, yeah, yeah, calendar. Hijri. So, okay. so here is. She was a maid, I guess. A maid? Yeah, because you know, the smaller the tomb, mm -hmm. the less important you are. Oh, unfortunately. Okay. This guy must. Be really important. Ali Sayyid Pasha. Then Muhammad Ali is very good. Yeah. You, which Muhammad Ali? <laughs> you're, you're crazy. <laughs> Effendi. What's Effendi? Effendi means sir. Or okay. like. Yeah. North African region you'd be called like Berberistan. Berberistan. <laughs> the <laughs> land of Berbers. And you know, Hungary, Majaristan, the Majar, Hindustan, the land of Hindus. Like even Pakistan, the land of free. Pakistan. I guess everyone's wondering what is Top Kapur? I was thinking the same thing. So, Top Kapur is a palace that stands proudly on the historic peninsula of Istanbul, overlooking the breathtaking views of the Bosphorus Strait. It's not just a palace, it's a testament to the grandeur, power, and cultural richness of the Ottoman civilization. Built in the 15th century, Top Kapur witnessed the rise and fall of empires, political intrigues and the flourishing of art and science. It was residence to the Ottoman sultans for almost 400 years, serving as the epicentre of political decisions and shaped the course of history. This palace is a living museum, a treasure trove of artefacts that tell the tales of triumph and challenges faced by the Ottoman rulers. run this trip. <laughs> Hebrew. Yeah, that's Quran in Hebrew. Sure. Yeah, I mean for sure. You, oh, it gives me headache. Uh, okay. Oh, maybe the mosque are providing that translations of the Quran. Yeah. <laughs> the hood, you're taking me back to the hood, man. <laughs> nah. <laughs> Now we take the metro to the university. 